Good morning, VCU parents and families. We are very excited to be with you this morning. Uh, my name is Lenan Yundestead, and I'm the Director of New Student and Family Programs. And I'm very happy uh, to, to have you here joining us. Unfortunately, I'm not showing you my face today. Um, I know that normally I give you a big smile and greet you properly, but I am homesick today and my face is looking a little rough. <laughs> and so uh, I'm very excited to present another friendly face uh, who's gonna be speaking you, with you this morning. Samara Reynolds uh, is our director of VCU uh, Career Services and is going to be talking with you a little bit about how you can support your student as they are beginning to think about jobs and internships and all kinds of other opportunities that will um, help them to, to better prepare for, for life after college. So uh, as always, we will record the webinar. We'll make it available to you um, in our Facebook group as well as on our um, our VCU Families blog so that you can check it out, refer back to it, or share it with other people that you think might find it useful. A lot of our parents and family members even share the webinars with their students. And so I highly encourage you to do that if you, you see something you think is of value. And then as always, we'll have an opportunity for questions at the end. And Samira will also share some contact information um, for how to reach out if, if you do have some additional questions. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Samira Reynolds. All right. Hi, everyone. Hi, parents and families and potential students who might be watching. Um, again, as director of VCU Career Services, I'm excited to talk with you today about the topic on hand, getting the offer around job and internship search. Our office engages with students as soon as they arrive on campus and even beforehand through orientation. And we work with students in one-on-one -on -one advising all the way through one year after graduation. And so we see students really going through, as you can see in this graphic, the job search process in a cycle. Oftentimes it will stop and start. Oftentimes it will come back to experiences that maybe they've had before around putting together job search documents or thinking through how their education feeds in, going through interviews, making decisions. Um, but it's really a process that Again, as a student goes through it once, they can become more confident as they move forward. But there's a lot that you can do to help your student feel like they are as informed and prepared and ready to succeed in this process as possible. So I have divided the advice today up into two different types of strategies, what I'll call level one, so things that are fairly low-hanging fruit, things that I think are easy for most students to try to engage with and might not take quite as much time and energy, and that ideally are accessible to students across the types of responsibilities or commitments that they might have while they're here at VCU. And then we'll get into some level two more advanced strategies if a student feels like they want to take those steps or if they've tried some of these level one pieces and want to add to their, um, their toolkit. So for level one, first and foremost is that they should feel welcome to talk to a career advisor. Uh, you may or may not be aware that we actually have three different career services offices on VCU's campus. I'm representing our centralized office. We are located in the student commons. We serve technically all undergraduate and graduate students who might come to our events or want to utilize our services across majors, across um, schools and colleges. Uh, but the School of Business and the School of Engineering actually have their own career services offices that serve those students in those majors or for the business group, the business foundation majors as well during their time at VCU and as alumni. Um, so know that your student has an opportunity to meet with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, especially if they'd like some personalized coaching to think through options and really feel like they've got that um, human component to the process beyond any technology that might be available to them. Um, where they can schedule those appointments is through our handshake system. So you'll see the graphic up at the top at VCU um, has a really robust database for jobs, internships, volunteer opportunities, undergraduate research, work study opportunities, and more, all in this one-stop shop that is called Handshake. Students already are set up to access it. All they need to do is access, uh, is activate their account and they can go in and search for opportunities. The nice thing about Handshake is it both has um, opportunities that are specific to VCU, that maybe we have a recruiting relationship with an employer who says every year they want to come back and recruit students, or maybe they're new to recruiting but know that they want VCU students specifically, so they post just to us, and again, opportunities here on campus too. And then we have employers across the region and across the country who select VCU as a place they would want to post, even if they don't have a specific recruiting relationship here. Um, so they have the opportunity to post widely and to make sure that students like VCU students get to see and apply for 
for opportunity so that your student has access to, I think in the past year we had about 25,000 postings for different jobs and internships on the system, um, which is exponentially more than even on the past system that we've had. So really there's, there's almost um, more opportunities than can be looked through, which is why we set up thoughtful filters and such and these labels, which I mentioned here in the next piece, so that if students know that they want to work, but they want to be within walking distance of campus or located on our bus line, that there are ways that they can filter just for positions that meet those needs. And the same goes that if they want to know they want to go home for the summer and intern uh, in Northern Virginia, in North Carolina, in Pennsylvania, or even in uh, other parts of Virginia, that they can filter by location as well and see what meets their needs. Um, knowing too that again they can use particular filters for on-campus opportunities or by functional areas. So it's a really a very robust tool and a great one that is VCU specific. Uh, they can also make appointments with a career advisor on Handshake. They are welcome to come into drop-in hours, which all of our offices have on different days of the week, um, but Handshake is a great place to make those one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, a next piece would be to attend career and internship fairs throughout the year. All three of our offices offer job and internship fairs throughout the year with different um, focuses, with different scopes and sizes. I know our office alone offers about eight or nine fairs per year, everything from our federal work study fair and our part-time job fair to our more comprehensive experiential learning fair, which happens to be this week, um, October 30th, uh, midday, uh, as well as um, we have a spring job and internship fair in February that is comprehensive across industries and areas. So we have these events going on, they're free for students to attend um, and their drop-in style. So it's a very easy way to engage with employers that have actively said, I want to spend time on VCU's campus to meet students and talk about opportunities. Uh, and last but not least, I would consider our level one strategy to be applying for postings on some external websites that we really do feel like are reliable in nature. So um, LinkedIn has a job posting function that has internships as well. It allows students to often apply through just submitting their LinkedIn profile, so a little bit simpler that way. Sometimes it will tell students who in their professional network works at a place that they're looking at. They can make those connections and ask questions. Um, and also companies pay to put opportunities on LinkedIn so you can know that there's an extra investment in finding particular talent and that is probably a really active job posting. Um, similarly, if a student wants to work here at VCU, especially after graduation, we have a, um, an HR-based website here, VCU Jobs, where students can apply for those opportunities. Occasionally, there will be part-time jobs and student on-campus jobs on VCU Jobs, so it certainly is a place that can be easy for students to access and see what opportunities exist. I mentioned three um, other sites here, indeed.com, which if a student Googles for biology internships or marketing jobs in a certain area, Indeed is probably the first site that's gonna come up because they've got, a, a it's a huge website, and B, they've got a relationship with Google. And so um, it can be a good place to find some ideas or get a, a sense of what companies are hiring, even if it's not for the specific position that you want at this time. Um, Craigslist, I think that a lot of students don't think about Craigslist for internship and job postings, but especially for organizations that might be smaller in nature, or want to hire quickly, they are able to post on Craigslist at no charge, and they know that a lot of young people do use the site. And so I've seen folks have success finding uh, an accounting internship with a small business or finding um, a, an opportunity to do some research with um, a, a smaller scientific organization on Craigslist. And so that's something to consider as well, certainly checking on backgrounds of organizations as you search. And then idealist.org is a great place to find, especially nonprofit type opportunities and some government Governmental as well. Um, and so it can just be another tool in the toolbox, um, any of these sites to add to Handshake. So those are some level one search strategies for your student for sure. Um, again, to mention here that we've got the fairs that we have throughout the year, I mentioned these in passing, but again, for those who are listening today or able to listen in this week, we do have one coming up just tomorrow. Uh, so that would be an awesome opportunity as this semester comes to a close for students, especially looking for internships, shadowing, anything experiential learning in nature um, that we have right here in the student comments. Um, we also have a number of fairs coming up for the spring. If your student wants to plan ahead, we have our uh, biannual part-time job fair coming up in January. In the past, we've seen um, you know, 40 to 50 employers at this and up to eight or 900 students. So it really is one that our students take advantage of here. Um, again, the spring, inter 
career and internship fair in February. We have a fair specifically for teacher recruitment, K through 12 opportunities. So a lot of this is for our seniors uh, or our graduate students who might be thinking about their next step, but it might be a good place for younger students to learn about future teaching opportunities at both, both public and private schools. And then last but not least, we're in the process of planning our reverse arts fair. So for students in the School of the Arts who might be looking for opportunities, it's a neat way for them to get to know employer partners in a unique setting and that will come up in March. So advanced search strategy, so kind of that level two. Um, encouraging your student to attend an industry-specific career services program. We host panels, we host workshops, we host um, career tracks, which I'll talk about in a moment, all year long that are specific to students interested in particular industry areas or fields. Um, and it's a chance for students to dive a little deeper and say, okay, I think I might want to go into law. Let me attend a panel of VCU alumni, for the most part, who are in that field and to get to ask them some thoughtful questions. I'm thinking about being uh, something in the medical profession. How can I learn about the different options that are available to me and get some real world advice? This is a great way for them to learn, but as I put here, a next level with that would be to then follow up, ask questions, reach out to the folks who are on the panel to connect with them for an informational interview one-to-one -one so those students can add those folks to their network as well. Um, using industry resources and vault guides through our website. So we work hard on, at VCU Career Services to cultivate um, web resources that we feel are really relevant to certain industries and fields so that students can get the information they need at no charge to the student and find it all in one place. So making sure they're utilizing our website and some of the vendors like Vault that we pay for so that students can use for free to really get some of that nuanced industry information and some guidance on where to search for opportunities. A great thing that I think students could really take even more advantage of is joining professional associations related to their career interests. Many are um, free for students to join or very low cost for students to join. And it can be a great way for them to be, then be subscribed to industry journals, to get emails about job opportunities, which many folks post to professional associations specifically, um, and to potentially, as I put in the next bullet, be aware of networking opportunities, live events, and conferences that they might have an opportunity to, again, go to as a student, either free or low cost, or potentially present with a faculty member and get some great experience. Um, and even if they see an event that they want to go to but they can't attend, they are always welcome to then contact either someone in the professional association to get the information or to directly contact speakers and presenters because they can then get that information and have that one-on-one -on -one contact that can lead to internship opportunities, to shadowing opportunities, to potential jobs because they're standing out by actually making that human connection. And then last but not least, I put on here, uh, networking directly pro with professionals via VCU Link and LinkedIn, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So I had mentioned one of the experiences that our office offers is called career treks. And so this is where we essentially take students on networking field trips, usually here in the local area, and we take them to two or three businesses on one day. We have a bus, we provide transportation, we provide lunch, but we bring students so that they can see in real time, in real life work experiences, what it might be like to work in a certain industry at a certain organization. Um, we tend to focus these on particular industries, so that might be healthcare related, human services, government, media and communications, or others. Often these are led, um, we choose them based on student interests that have come about by employers who say they really want to hire our students and want that extra exposure. Um, some of them are through faculty partnerships, etc. but we're always looking for ideas and trying to customize that. Um, but it's neat because students, the trips are usually limited to about 20 students, and they get a chance to, again, see those environments in real time, meet professionals in the field, usually VCU alumni or recruiting professionals that are hosting us, and really get a sense of would this be a place for me. And then ideally, if a student goes there and they feel a connection, if they apply then to an opportunity, they can engage with folks they met on the track to help support them through that opportunity, put in a good word, and or they can say, not only did I read this job description, it sounded interesting, but I actually came to your organization on a career track, and here's why I feel like this is a really good fit. And all of a sudden, their application really stands out. So um, I would encourage you to have your students keep this on their radar for the next year as this program grows. And then I mentioned briefly informational interviewing. And so for those who might not be familiar with the term, it really is technically where a student might be interviewing 
someone on the other side of the table. They're talking to a professional to learn more about their experience and ideally get a sense if either that organization that the person works for or the industry that they're in would be a fit for that student. I know for me, both the way that I found uh, career services and as a path for myself was through informational interviewing and shadowing and getting to ask some of those key questions. Um, and I've also secured jobs over the course of my career that started with some really great informational interviews so folks could get to know me and I could see is there really a fit and a great vibe um, that I want to be a part of this organization. Uh, often this is a chance for students to ask the type of questions that they wouldn't ask in a normal job interview when they might be kind of putting on uh, their best professional self and trying to impress. This is a chance for them to relate on a human level um, and to ask tough questions about what does that person like most or least about the organization? Where do they see growth happening? How, um, how would that person really evaluate that student's resume and encourage them to think about new experiences to add or wording to tweak, et cetera. So it's a really a chance to get that advice. Um, there's immense value in these types of conversations that tend to only be maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour at most in nature, but a lot to be gained because it helps the student expand their professional network and develop skills they can use for years to come. They can, again, connect for future opportunities. If they are informational interviewing with someone, that person will often keep them in mind then to say, oh, I had this great conversation with a student. We have a new internship program that's being launched. Let me send them this and encourage them to apply let alone if a student sees a posting and then says, hey, I know we talked about a month or two ago. I see you all are looking now for this entry level position. Could you tell me more about that? And then they're not starting from scratch. They've got that relationship already. And again, this idea of gaining advice for the search and interview process, that insider knowledge that someone who works for an organization can be able to give. Um, so informational interviews, again, one of my favorite things to encourage students to do because it really is um, a win-win on both sides. Often the professionals and or alumni they're talking to feel really good about giving back in this way and encouraging students that might be thinking about the profession and for students it's a way to build their confidence and their network as they go through. Um, a tool that can be really useful for this is VCU Link. This just launched to students um, in the early um, August, September timeframe, and it is specific to VCU as a networking platform. You see here an online community for connecting students, alumni, and friends in the university specifically for career, adv career advice industry contacts and what they call excuse me, flash mentoring. So a lot of our students say mentoring sounds interesting, but that sounds like a big commitment. And really a lot of our professionals say the same thing, but they want to give back of their time and advice. And VCU Link is a great platform to be able to do that. And I'll show you a couple of screenshots here. And so a student, as they set up their own profile, this is free for them to use, they can then browse just like they would on LinkedIn for individuals that are all either VCU alumni or specifically friends of the university who have said, I want to be on this platform because I want to help students. And they can browse by particular industry, by company or organization type. Someone might say, I know I'd like to work at Capital One. I want to see what alumni we have there. Or they might say, I know I want to be in the nonprofit sector. Let me see if I can find someone that works there. Um, the neat thing you'll see in this particular screenshot is that students might say, I want to engage with someone who um, is from my particular identity background, and how can I find someone that I feel a connection with beyond just the professional interest who might understand my experience. And so students can really customize and look for who they would most want to talk to, and then they can reach out and connect through the system. Um, the neat thing you'll see here is not only can a student view a profile, but they can actually request a meeting and find a common time through the platform instead of having to go open their email and do something separate. They can say, and messages through the system. And as you'll see um, here, the alumni have picked for themselves, you'll see those little blue badges, um, what they have said they would definitely be open to giving advice on. So this person might say, I feel like based on my experience, I could definitely help a student thinking through major choice or thinking through networking or thinking through how to put together their resume. Um, they might be open to all of those topics, but students can check from the list of what they'd like to talk about. They can also, through the system, set up an online video call. Again, not having to do something separate. It can actually be done through VCU Link. Or they can choose a phone call or they can choose in person and suggest a meeting time. So again, it helps streamline the process, make it easier for both parties involved. And then based on a student's profile information, it actually pre-populates a sample email that a student can absolutely customize um, to their needs, but it helps get it started. Sometimes for our students, we find the most intimidating part of an informational interview is how do I reach out and ask for that in a professional way and make sure that they know what I'm asking for and that I can get them to say yes. And so uh, VCU Link and the team at VCU alumni have done that hard work of coming up with these template messages so that students can feel empowered in that process.
So again, um, here's an example of the video uh, piece to, for those flash mentoring types of experiences, and we have the message system too. So a really neat opportunity. Again, it's brand new, um, but we already have over a thousand individuals in the platform, including most of those being those alumni and such. The students are just getting on board, and we want to see more and more students taking advantage. Um, last piece on this is the industry network. So especially as a student starts defining what they know they would like to do or what industries they want to explore for sure, they can join some of these industry networks and they'll see discussion boards and opportunities happening through there that might inspire them of who they want to connect with and how to stay up to date on language and things in their particular industry of choice. So applying with confidence. Uh, again, as far as advice that you can give to your students to make them feel like their best selves as they're going through this process of an internship or full-time job pursuits. Um, our, first and foremost, don't wait until the last minute to apply. Um, many opportunities that we have posted to Handshake or to other systems are really evaluating candidates on a rolling basis. Even if there is a deadline in mind, they might be saying, you know, we're going to put a deadline through to December, but we'd love to have someone on sooner. Let's see what applications come through and review and interview as we're going. So for students, if they see a, a later deadline, don't assume that that's set in stone and it is best to apply early if they see something they're interested in. Um, using industry specific job search document tips on our website. Again, another thing that our team, especially this summer, has newly curated are um, resume tips, cover letter tips, and industry related tips just for certain industries and majors. So that can really help students get some language to make sure that they're highlighting the types of things that someone in that industry might really want to see so that they can stand out in the process. Um, similarly, we always encourage students to customize their resumes and cover letters to each job description and ideally save those with a specific file name that tells them that, oh, this is for that internship. I wanted this specific organization so they don't accidentally submit the wrong documents for the wrong opportunity, which would absolutely um, have them be disqualified from a certain position. So we want to set them up for success. Um, oftentimes students will submit the same general cover letter, for example, to every opportunity, but if they took an extra moment to add some detail on why they're super interested in that particular opportunity or to say here's what I saw in the job description as the responsibilities and the qualifications you wanted and here's how I feel like I really have and match those things that can both show the organization that the student cares enough to say I'm going to customize my materials and really go for this instead of just submitting it blindly but it can also help connect the dots for uh, recruiters and employer partners that might be saying the student is majoring in this, but they're applying for something related to here. I'm not sure why that might be the best fit match. And it's the student's job to really tell that story. And again, our team can absolutely help with that, either in our drop in advising or our appointments to help students feel really confident about their documents. Um, that is the next point here. Having it reviewed by career services, it is a, a piece of the bread and butter of what we do and we're always happy to help students. Even if they can't come into our office, we can do those reviews virtually and so that's something our a student can connect with us about. Um, last but not least, I would say is to follow up with internal contacts after applying. This could be a build off of what we talked about for informational interviewing. If you know somebody internally, who can you follow up with? But many times when it's something is posted, depending on the size of the organization, you may be able to figure out who the hiring manager might be for that position, or they may post contact information um, when they put it onto a website. Oftentimes students will apply and if they don't hear anything back, especially in a few weeks, they will assume the worst and, and assume they weren't selected and that um, they will often take that to heart as well. When oftentimes if employers of all shapes and sizes might have hiring, especially for interns, at different points in their priority list. And they might be falling behind based on someone going out for leave or a new deadline that's arisen or a technology issue, et cetera. And so for for the recruiters, if a student or individual follows up after they apply, especially if a deadline has recently passed or it's been about two or three weeks since they applied, and say, I just want to make sure you receive my materials. I still remain very interested. Is there any information on the timeline you can provide? Oftentimes that can take a student from just being a, a piece of paper, a resume in the pile to being an actual person that they say, this one is showing initiative. I want to get to know this particular student. They obviously knew they applied and really want this position if they're willing to follow up and can really raise a student up um, in their chances of getting a particular opportunity just by following up to check on the status. Short, uh, short pieces on interviewing. If a student especially has not had a professional interview um, for an internship or full-time job type opportunity before, I'd say there are three items that can really help them to grow in this space. Um, the first and foremost would be we have on our website 
practice interview questions that are industry specific. So this can be a great way for them to either write out those answers or sit in front of a mirror and engage and say, okay, what are some of these questions? How might I answer this? Let me get some practice just on my own time 24 seven to be thinking about what are some of those common questions. Um, a next step would be to engage with another tool that we purchased so that students can use for free called interview stream. This, uh, you see a little screenshot here in the bottom corner, but it can be accessed through a student's handshake account and then they can select either a sample of a general interview or of an industry specific interview based on a number of different choices. And they can um, essentially have it uh, ask a question on the screen, then they answer it on video, and then it plays it back for themselves. So that gives them a chance to see visually how are they coming across in the interview experience? Is there anything they can tweak? Um, how many filler words might they be using? The ums, likes, you knows that often are common if a student is rushing, rushing themselves or if they are nervous in an experience. Um, and they can also connect with their career advisor on the team to say, I just finished an interview stream interview. Would you mind reviewing that for me? And that can be another tool for them to use to get some feedback. Uh, and last but not least, I would say a third progression in this process would be to schedule a mock interview with one of the career services offices. We do this daily, we can customize it to whatever opportunity a student is looking into, um, and we can give them live personalized feedback in a session with that student. And so really, again, if they have a sense of the questions, they've gotten a sense of how they might come across, then a safe space to get that additional feedback before they launch into true interviewing is by working with a member of a career services team here at VCU. So dress to impress. I wanted to highlight this for folks because we get a lot of questions from students of I'm heading into my first professional interview or I'm going into an industry or setting that is different for me. How should I dress for this interview? Um, really, as far as bare bones, generalized information, and we can always customize this for a student as they're thinking about their own process is to, to be clean, neat, and wrinkle free. You don't have to have the fanciest outfit. You don't have to have the trendiest thing. It's really about how can you come across as clean, neat, and put together so that the interviewer can focus on you as a person and what you are saying, not on what you are wearing. It should set you up as relatively a clean slate. Um, I, we always encourage students to keep clothing items conservatively cut and not too baggy or too tight. And there, um, if there's some need for advice on tailors in town or other ways to customize some of that clothing, we can offer that advice as well through our office. Um, we encourage students to think about neutral colors, both for suit jackets, for example, or for shirts and other um, pieces that either match or complement each other. There's a little more flexibility these days um, in whether things have to be kind of, if you need a specific color shirt, et cetera, a lot of industries don't hold time hold close to those standards that they might have in the past, but you want to make sure that you're looking like you had intended to put that particular outfit together. We always encourage students heading in to go light on jewelry, accessories, and fragrance. Some of this is uh, about keeping distractions to a minimum so that instead of, again, focusing on a large piece of jewelry or a, a large watch or big earrings, that they're focused on you and what you're saying, um, and that fragrance can be um, a touchy one because some folks are allergic to certain fragrances or sensitive in that way. And again, we wouldn't want that to be distracting, especially if your interview is in a closed office space um, and that could give a negative impression even if it shouldn't. So keeping those things to a minimum. Um, and then again, knowing your industry. This can be something a student can research on their own or something that our team can help provide guidance on, um, but they might find that their best outfit might either be a business casual attire, especially if they're looking at something um, employment on campus or something that more, might be more of a part-time nature, um, all the way to business professional, which for most individuals is gonna be a suit of some kind. Um, and then again, that's gonna depend on the industry and opportunity. We have individuals who go for um, um, opportunities at all levels within a tech organization or a fashion facing organization that might very well want to see a different type of attire. You might be overdressed if you're wearing um, a matching suit uh, kind of head to toe and they might want to see a little bit more personality or dress that down a little bit more. So again, we can offer that advice, but a lot of that is readily available um, on our website as well. I will point out for those who aren't familiar that we in our office here at VCU Career Services have our suit yourself closet. So this is a really awesome opportunity for students who might be looking for additional pieces of clothing to wear to first interviews or first days on the job. Um, these are free, gently used professional clothing items in a range of sizes, a range of colors, um, all the way from, again, suit pieces, 
shirts, blouses, skirts, shoes, jewelry, etc. Um, and anytime students come to career services, they can take advantage of that and do so discreetly. We have students um, who regularly keep those pieces organized and um, and fashion forward as well. And we have team members who can give some advice if a student is looking for things to pair together um, and want some additional support with that. But students can take up to four pieces of gently used professional clothing for free each time they come by. And so I would definitely encourage your student to come check that out if they haven't done so already. So last but not least, really to bring this all together is I would encourage you to have your student connect with us in one or more different ways. Hopefully this webinar has given you some great ideas of how they could do that in person. Um, as I mentioned, we have appointments in our office every single day of the work week and the school week from eight to five. So a student can schedule when it's convenient for them. We also have drop-in hours in our office specifically, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. right here um, in our space that students can check in, um, especially if they've got a quick question or a document they'd like to be reviewed or something that just might be more convenient for them than setting a true appointment time. Um, the other two career offices also also have appointments and also have drop-in hours and they have that information on their website as well. Um, as far as ways to connect with us, again our website which I referenced a couple different times is careers.vcu.edu. Lots of great information there. Um, students are welcome to call uh, as far as an email address if there are quick questions or students want to be referred to the right person. Um, that is just careers at vcu.edu. That's our general email inbox. Um, and we are located right here in the student comments on the first floor right across from the food court and next to the market it so ideally easy for students to access as well. Um, I hope this has given you some new ideas and information to pass along to set your student up for success and we really do look forward to being a partner with them as they find the best fit opportunity. So at this point I'll pause and see if there are questions or other items that uh, Lynn would like us to cover. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Samira. Um, if you do have questions, I wanna let you know how to ask those. So you can either utilize the chat function in Zoom, if you kind of scroll to the very bottom of your little Zoom uh, screen there, you'll see the chat button and you can click that and type in your question. Or uh, if you would prefer to speak your question, you can unmute yourself or I can unmute you and, um, and you can ask any questions that you may have that way. So I'll pause for a little bit in case uh, anyone has any questions for Samira. And if not, I'm gonna ask a couple that I think you might have. All right, Samira, while they're thinking, maybe I'll just go ahead and ask a question. Sure. Um, so first of all, I wanted to say uh, one of the practices that I think has been highly um, effective that Career Services has done that I've seen over and over do wonders for students are those mock interviews that you uh, talked about. Um, I am in the business of hiring students to be orientation leaders and um, several students have come through our process, maybe their first year and didn't quite get selected. Um, you know, it's very competitive and um, you know, we always encourage them, go to career services, uh, get some, uh, some practice, uh, get some help with your resume and come back to us next year. We'd love to see you again. And we're in our interview process right now and I'm seeing so many students who have grown tremendously in their interviewing skills who have shared with us that they have gone through a mock interview with career services. And so I just wanted to first give props for that. That program is working really, really well. Um, Thank you. That's great to hear. Yeah. But the, the question that I have is, you know, a lot of times we hear from students or we hear from their parents or families. I'm just so busy. I have so much going on. I don't have time to go to all of these things or to do all these things to prepare. Yeah. Um, and of course, our conversation with them has a lot more to do with, well, you got to reprioritize maybe and think through some things. And if, a job is a really important priority. You need to make time for that. But in the event that you had to suggest maybe a best practice um, or a best idea for them to try, even if they could only do one thing each semester, in let's say their first year, what would those things be? What are the, th the most high impact things you would recommend a first year student do in the fall and the spring semester? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I think first and foremost, kind of big picture, I know that a lot of students do feel like the job or internship search might be a bit of a looming cloud over them if they don't have a system for organizing that. Um, often we will t tell students to teach it, sorry, to treat it like a class or treat it like even a workout and put it on your calendar. Mm -hmm. So that maybe you say, all right, based on my my schedule I do have a lot going on but Friday afternoons from four to five I don't have a class I don't have another commitment I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on my calendar so that I know that's my job search time so is there a way that they can fit it in and just like a workout if they miss it one day maybe they have to move it to another day so it's not that it never happens it just might um, be am amendable to life uh, and things going on but as far as first-year students you know for us it's about exposure to the different career options that might be out there and gaining a little bit of hands-on experience. We talk a lot here at VCU about real experience, about um, experiential, kind of hands-on, how can they get a little bit more of a feel for the working world. And so to me, I would encourage if a first-year student has federal work study to make sure they're taking advantage of that because those are often great on and off-campus opportunities that have their role as a student uh, top of mind so that they can balance those commitments while getting some really hands-on work experience. Um, I would encourage a student to at least have their resume updated. Oftentimes what a student will use to submit in their admissions uh, application as far as a resume goes is often much longer and not quite focused on the same details that if they're applying for their first internship or for a job opportunity. So we can really help them either in drop-ins or through email or even through coming to a resume workshop and getting some tips or just through our website. Like there's a lot of ways for them to get some of those resume information on how to, how to pair that down to make really their first professional resume. Um, I would also encourage a student to just come by one of the offices that again a drop-in just coming by for 20 minutes to say hello to see where the office space is to maybe get a little advice on on how to use handshake is a good opportunity and then kind of last but not least I would say either I would probably say logging onto Handshake and browsing there because again, a student can do that 24 seven um, at a time that is convenient for them and browse and come back and favorite opportunities just like they would on some other websites. But knowing that those are opportunities for VCU students that really are, um, they're not gonna often feel like they're applying for something and that they're not gonna get feedback on that. It's typically gonna be a little bit more of a, of a closed circle on that um, would be a place I'd spend some time. So getting to know Handshake, getting to know the career office that most closely aligns with their major, which might be us or business or engineering, um, and ideally getting their resume uh, into a professional format, I think are good places to spend some time. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask one more. Um, and if, if anyone else has any questions, please feel free again to put those in the chat window or to unmute your microphone and uh, to ask those directly. Um, so my second question is, uh, as a parent or a family member, many, uh, well, I'm not a parent or a family member, but many of our parent and family members may be at a point in their lives where they're interested in switching careers or looking to new things. Um, what advice might you have for somebody who's who's maybe trying to uh, pursue something new, who's who's not at the age of a student, um, but has maybe got some years of experience uh, under their belt? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I think it's first important to remember that uh, even VCU's Career Services website, with the exception of Handshake, uh, all of our website is available to the public. So if there are pieces that are industry specific or some of those resume tips or other um, interviewing guidance, et cetera, all of that is free for our parents and families to access um, through our website. So that could be a good place to start and get some tips and information. Um, I would encourage them to start thinking about that informational interview piece that I mentioned, um, whether they do that through VCU link, which if they're a VCU alumnus or they're um, a friend of VCU, they're welcome to join VCU link and then they're both on there as a resource for students, but they can also network alumni to alumni or friends of VCU to friends of VCU. So that could be a neat tool, but LinkedIn is really a great one um, as well that is you know, broadly applicable based on um, industry area, based on roles, based on wherever someone may or may not have gone to school. Um, but it's a good place to get those um, networking muscles working again and to start to get a sense of what is being actively posted, what organizations are growing, what interests me, and most, um, if, if parent or family members went to um, a college or university themselves, most institutions have a university page that you can access and get um, and be able to see alumni from that institution and customize it down to geographic area, to um, 
industry area, et cetera, and then maybe get a little bit more of a curated list of both ideas for places where some of the alumni from your own institution or in a similar major field have worked um, and or think about actual folks to reach out to. But really, um, in some ways, it's similar to my advice for first year students. Do you have a professional resume? And can you get that um, in shape? And if you don't, um, there are some great advice again available online, but even thinking about reaching back out to your own institution, which may have alumni services, um, or there are often um, local type programs going on through chambers of commerce, through um, some of the public libraries, et cetera, and some great community resources to get you back in the groove. Great. Well, thank you so much again, Samara. I really appreciate your time and all of the wonderful information that you shared. Um, for those of you parents and families who are watching this a little bit later, um, uh, as you can see on the screen that is up right now, Samara has shared some contact information uh, so that if you do have follow-up questions or things that you, uh, you would like to ask, you know how to reach out. Um, I would love to have you all join us at our, our next webinar series. We'll be sending out some notifications about those. We're actually thinking about uh, doing a little special one in lieu of, or in light of homecoming coming up. Uh, so you may see a little special announcement, but otherwise all of them are available on our website. You can see the full schedule there, which is NSFP, as in new student and family programs, .vcu.edu. Um, so we will touch base with you when we see you at our next webinar or event. And again, thank you so much to Samira and we'll be, uh, we'll be connecting with you all shortly. Thank Have you. a great rest of your day.